I got laid off. I got fired. I got fired. But here's the thing. I was a binge guy. I remember seeing her at the local titty bar. I feel dirty right now just telling it into a microphone. We're broken around here. Working man is Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Working Class Holes podcast. I'm your host, Ed McGowan, here in a break room with my co-host, Josh Ricardo. What's up, buddy? Edward, hello. Uh, we have a fun guest. Not only a former professional athlete, which is fucking awesome. Not only a really funny comedian that plays all over, uh, also has a really great podcast called Risque Business News. You nailed it. <sighs> Man, that's a lot. That's a tongue tie. RBN. RBN. Oh, yeah. RBN. RBN. Oh, yeah. RBN. Oh, RBN. <laughs> <laughs> the very funny Lois Sore guy. Hello, Laura. How are you? I'm great. Thank you for having me. Thanks I'm for so coming. Excited. More working people over here. We're this all working. Good. Yeah. I like that you got out of work just to, just oh, to do yeah. this. Oh, yeah. I sprinted on over. So I, on brand. You know, yes. That's great. I would be, so they call it on break right now. <laughs> <laughs> You're in the break room. I'm Why aren't we just room. the cheesiest uh, yeah. bunch? over here feel very uh, <laughs> Sogar is a German name you know I think so it's funny my my dad is Polish but he's from that little area where it was kind of like a big old question yeah yeah, you know, yeah. There's a, there's, my grandfather's got that yeah he used to say Polish and then he would change it to Slovak yeah, yeah I could call it Russian but then I'm Russian and German and that's a lot yep <laughs> That is a lot. We're going Polish. We're going Polish. It's a lot, be, <laughs> a lot, a lot drink, of but. energy. Uh, my mom is uh, full German. She's like an immigrant from Germany. I bring this up yes. because I usually ask right out of the gate, what's the craziest day job you ever had? Yes. And you were a professional swimmer. Correct. And you are tall, like I most am. swimmers are. Mm -hmm. So I was trying to figure out, is that from the European. German side? Just European, right? I think so. Uh, you know what's funny? Neither of my parents are that tall. I'm about the same height as my dad. Really? Oh, yeah. yeah. He doesn't love that. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's weird if you're dating someone, your kid, your daughter. It's a fucking weird moment. You know? I just love the, the height thing. Like, guys, it's such oh, a, dude, it's, it's such so a thing weird. for guys. It's dude. such a point of pride. And I was growing, and he was like, son, son, of, he tried to son of a bitch. coffee and cigarettes. <laughs> you know, Laura's just stopping. shot up three inches this summer. <laughs> It's like, what am I going to do? Smoke these grits. <laughs> it's a Marlboro Red. So I was just in the uh, bedroom before you got here, nice. and my wife was watching. <laughs> hey, now. <laughs> and my wife was watching one of those like shows. Uh, I think it's like Summerville House. Mm -hmm. The Bravo show. Oh, Summer House. Summer House. Oh, like yes. a reality show? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. I feel like the internet, and you help me with this, because your show kind of deals with uh, – risque thing let's talk about yeah. height and sexual advantages yep. per males who are short and tall and blah 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 so this guy i feel like there's the same guy i keep seeing on every show on every instagram it's that guy it's not a i'm not naming a singular person here i'm saying an overall yeah. general aesthetic uh-huh the shorter hair into the mullet, the shorter hair into the Jack Antonoff curl Douche, hair. Douchebag. Well, yes, yeah, Charles, I'll let you say it. You're more qualified than I. Yeah. I'm yeah. an out of touch it's looking person. It's yeah. mostly that guy. Yeah, yeah. right. So yeah. he's like, you know, I had a girl tell me once, he's not very tall. I had a girl tell me once I read tall. And wow. I was thinking, men are the new women. That's, that's great. The insecurity we've always had as men used to be masked by being tough. Yeah. Like you wanted to be tough because you were so insecure on the inside. Now these dudes are so insecure and not tough. Like how are you insecure and not tough? <laughs> it's it's really tall. crazy. You've absorbed all the worst parts of being women. I gotta say, it's insane. No, the Men beauty. have like eating disorders and shit now too. I'm like, yeah. that, that's my culture? <laughs> How Those dare are, you? That's appropriation. That's what we do. That is cultural appropriation. <laughs> that's what we do. But I'm, I don't blame them. You guys have the Marvel characters. I'm like, that is insane. Yeah. If I grew up watching that, I'd, you have to be rail thin and massively jacked. So you like, guys have really one-upped us on our own. On I our own say deal. this. I try. My ideal is like Fat Thor. Right? Yeah. Like Fat oh, Thor. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm about to blow your minds. <laughs> Give me it. So I've been watching Naked Attraction. Okay. Uh -huh. All right? Uh-huh. And they do these little great tidbits whenever one of my person goes, I kind of like a little bit of a belly, this woman says. <laughs> and they said that over 72% of women prefer like a dad bod. Can I tell you, women don't give a fuck what you look like. <laughs> we have proven that over and over and over and over. And look at any, you, you need to be rich and powerful. That's what you uh, need to be. That Those really is the things. only yeah. or, for sure thing. Or like a really nice guy and like maybe just nice. Like be like, but a good personality. <laughs> 
You could look at you look at so, so many relationships, it's and you're so like, funny. doesn't matter what the guy looks like. Never has once. A lot of celebrities, even like actors, we were like, well, your you're husband's not, handsome. Uh, yeah, I mean, people I'm, pick handsome people. I I'm very shallow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't gonna let you off the hook. She doesn't mean her, guys. Don't you love that? Someone will fuck you. It ain't gonna be me. <laughs> it's not like me. No, but never there's be. a lady with a one eye right now dying to be with you. <laughs> She's out there. She's available. I She's have a method in my day. ma'am. It's a roundabout way of getting to back to swim. Okay, <laughs> but I no, truly I believe like I remembered a good friend of mine, beautiful girl in high school, about mm-hmm. six feet, like runway model, all written Where all over. Where are you from? Mm-hmm. San Diego. Oh, for sure. That so she was the most insecure about her height. She was stunning, and I feel like that switch is a whole new thing for men. But you as an athlete and a swimmer specifically, your height was the reason why you, one of the reasons why you were great. There was utility to my height. Yes. For sure. Like yeah. that Michael Phelps thing where your wingspan is longer than your height and the, like just the way your body's built, that comes into play. Oh, no, absolutely. It's literally just physics at a certain point. Like mm-hmm. people are like, oh, like how can you be good at swimming? And I'm like, my arms were just the right ratio to my torso, to my legs and then I was really muscular on top of that. So a lot of it just, it, it is what it is. And yeah. then you obviously have to train and then differentiate yourself between a lot of other freaks who are built the same way as yeah. you. So when, um, did, when did you start swimming? When I was five. Whoa. Yeah, it's one of those sports wow. like you were talking yeah. about off air, like gy- like gymnasts, you start when you're like, L- out of the diapers. Wow. And I was doing lessons before then. So it was like not really a choice out the gate. I mean, I guess I probably chose when I was a child, but like, you know, it's not yeah. like I fell into it later on. I was not like, I love swimming. So you know? were other people in your family swimmers? Or no, did my dad just... swam a little bit in high school. And he, um, so that he like knew about the sport from that. And then beyond that, there was just like water safety. We had, a, I lived in um, Texas briefly and we had a pool in our backyard. And my parents were like, let's not keep her alive. And you just and figured, drown. you just took to the water like like uh, a, like fish. a fish yeah <laughs> you got it like a fish so, to water so i started i started swimming and i had terrible insomnia as a child like really bad like i wouldn't sleep which is like terrible for huh. the parents yeah, yeah, <laughs> They're yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. yeah i have a two-year-old that Shut would be that awful down. right but when i swam i would sleep and oh yeah oh yeah you know, like, this is that's cool. true yeah my son has swimming lessons now and he when he Not does them he's out. done yeah done. oh yeah so he's I, done that was a big hit for them so they kept signing me up for more of the lessons and I did like advanced guppy to like fucking shark or whatever yeah. it is like, <laughs> like shark. manta ray like whatever you are the black then, belt of swimming yeah, exactly shark they really like to level you through <laughs> there's a couple of Naval kids submarine. from the trailer park and piranha <laughs> <laughs> well that okay that's a good point too is you know I grew up in a like really public low level school we had a football team and we, the football team was good but beyond that there was no swim there was no lacrosse yeah so you have to be in a certain demo that has access to a pool, I would, yeah. you know, to be great. Because I, I yeah. like thinking about I mean, what yeah. it takes to be great. Like the people don't get like the amount of separation is so minute when you get to the level. I mean, you were almost it's the Olympics. You were this close to the Olympics. Of a second. And that's really? what it comes down to. Wow. Really escalated. <laughs> this is why people wow. get like a gain. A second. Yeah, it's nuts. Gaining edges at that level. That's why people cheat. It's because it's so hard. It's so cutthroat. And swimming and all the Olympic sports are actually like really brutal because there's limited spots. So it's like you have to be top two in one specific race in one specific instance of that race. So not to cut ahead too far, but I was top seed. It like I had the fastest time in the country, like went into the meet, like should have been a layup. Like everyone was like, I'm going to make the team, whatever. I just had a bad race when it counted and did not qualify. So Ah. it's pretty nuts. I've, but here's the thing I've seen girls. It's always trials is always heartbreaking. Someone, it's like the, the, the meet where everyone's crying like the whole time I once watched a girl break the world record in semifinals and then not qualify for the Olympics in the finals oh, which is God. like really like she's the fastest that's ever fucking could she go wow she maybe go it makes you appreciate maybe she's a little tired and all like Ledecky and oh, Phelps and all those people that are anyone who's great at a pro sport it, when you hear shit like that you go this is probably why it's so hard to market the Olympics mm-hmm. like remember that Dan and Dave debacle no. the Reebok they were both supposed to be one and two for the uh, decathlon and Reebok did this huge push, the Dan and Dave push, 
huge commercials going into this, the Olympics, and they didn't qualify. Neither and of them? It, no, cause the, yeah, because they had, like like Laura's saying, a wow. bad day at the wow. track. They had a bad day at the track, and they didn't qualify. So all of that, millions of dollars in marketing, I, down it, the, the it's, shitter. It's really, really tough for, for like sponsors and stuff like that, because you have to pick. Obviously, it takes a long time to develop an ad campaign. Yeah. But you have no idea. And then, honestly, sometimes the additional pressure or distraction of being part of something like that is not going to help you. No. Right. You know, beyond the people like you're totally right. Katie, Lit- people don't give enough credit. To, I mean, every, people give a lot of credit to Michael Phelps, but like it is unbelievable what he was able to accomplish. To and then Katie Ledecky, dominance. unbelievable. And to repeat it over and over and over. Those guys are freaks yeah. of nature. Yeah. Freaks. It's, so it's, cool. it's, all, it's like a. So. All right. So you get to that high of level and we're talking like. The, we're talking about a job. It's a job. You're. It is a job. For every sure. day, what? Four a.m., five a.m. You're so, up. So yeah, we would have practice at like five in the morning. You'd swim for two hours or so, and then you would go do like. It depends on what stage you are at. So during college, you'd maybe go to classes or like whatever it might be. Then you come back around two o'clock or so and do weights or some other conditioning sort of like we'd go running, which is so fucked up that we were swimming like four hours a day. We'd still have to run. <laughs> what's like, the what's p- wrong? purpose of that? What's wrong? Like, is that a mental women, thing? Cause we're women and uh. we have fat immediately. <laughs> like, God, I love it. I, I, I love women so much. God, like, I it's, the worst the, it's like the raw steel. Opt out. <laughs> no, thanks. So no, no, but like in, in all seriousness, what's funny about swimming is you get really good at it, like really efficient at it. So it doesn't start, at a certain point, you don't burn the same rate of calories oh, as you right. would doing cardio of another type. So you kind of do uh, need, that makes sense. need yeah, to right. supplement. Because for me, my stroke, or like any of the people at that level, your stroke is so efficient while you're swimming that you're just, it's like walking yeah. almost. Only when you're really pushing yourself. That does make sense. And you don't want to do that all the time because you don't want to put too much undue stress on those joints because uh-huh. then they'll fall apart. What, uh, what kind wow. of chlorine situation were you oh, in? You know, oh, Did my you, God. Your hair's done. It's I had, brittle. So when I got to Texas, they were a lot better because they had a you know money to pour, put towards ah, these pools and yeah. like ventilators and stuff like that. But a lot of the pools, I'm from Rhode Island in New England, they <laughs> were terrible terrible pools where i'm like this should be condemned one of them was oh. brown university's pool i used to have the freaking record at it and the pool got condemned just skateboarders in it now <laughs> that was we were supposed to have our state championships there we like can't we can't have it at brown because it's the pool was being ripped down because it's not safe <laughs> we're like we knew <laughs> did anybody ever lose their faculties in the pool and then they had to clear it i feel like people under severe like stre- body stress. You know what? Like Not an Iron really. Man. You know how people sometimes will lose their like throw bowels up or something. Whatever. Like that. Yeah. Lose their bowels. Man, there's like a famous clip of a woman doing uh, the uh, iron. Runners love to shit the themselves. They love it. It's yeah, like yeah, a yeah. It's right. Weird. She had like it's, toilet paper hanging down her leg. No, the whole way. it was not toilet paper. She, <laughs> yeah, runners, she shit herself. Bro. Runners are big fans of that. It's kind of weird as hell. Actually, you guys should stop doing that <laughs> yeah as collectively as it as a pull unit. it together it's disgusting um no we didn't really do that that much i have actually never seen someone shit in the pool besides like children okay you know uh um, <laughs> I, I have a question so, i don't know runners think about it <laughs> have you did you ever have any friends that had like an above ground pool like when you did you ever show up and they're like hey laura would you want to get in a pool? <laughs> You're just like, <laughs> oh yeah, I loved, I loved a, a, a like, nice... why, hey, Laura, do so, like you can't, no, no this you, isn't a pub ground pool. That... Regulation, <laughs> It's Tim? like an uncle, hey, Timmy, hey, Laura, hey, get in the pool. Get in the pool, why don't you show us what you can do? <laughs> now we did have, uh, we'd have to do these things called stingers, which are when you go and travel for a meet, you before the competition, so it's morning and night, and frequently you'd want to like wake up super fast and like, you know, people do like cold tubs now yeah. and stuff oh, like that. So right. the point Plunge. is to kind of like just like like get yourself up and like quickly um, be prepared to swim fast in the morning, which can obviously be tough to wake up. So you'd swim a stinger and the stinger is supposed to be like within the first 10 minutes, ideally, of you waking up, you are in the water doing a couple like short bursty like adrenaline pumping things. Wow. So frequently at a pool or at the hotels, um, you'd want to do them at the hotel pool. Mm. So just because like you know it's yeah. easy access you're staying right there you don't want to necessarily drive to whatever facility and you'd be like at the ramada in so at great. the like indoor 
four piece of shit a piece like a like the ones that are shaped like a like a what is that like a like a horse lima horseshoe? bean or oh, something yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, like a lima bean I just ride. love how like she has to go do this she's like I had to go prep so I had to jump into this pool to prep myself for this major competition yeah. me I'm doing a road gig at fucking <laughs> Altoona and I'm just lounging by the Ramada and trying to take a selfie to make oh, it yeah, look yeah, like yeah. the gig's better <laughs> Bunch of Olympians walk in, you're like with a paper and a coffee. Like. You're the landscaper. <laughs> there usually be some hyped up kid who's like on vacation there, like swimming around, and we're behind him, just like, whoa. <laughs> you're like Navy SEALs in there? He's like doing cannonballs. <laughs> the water is splashing like four foot waves because it is not designed for multiple 180 pound athletes flinging their bodies around this thing. <laughs> when you didn't get. Uh, the Olympics was at it for you. Did you feel it? Oh, like, yeah. I'm done. Like, I'm not going through another I, four years of training did, for this. I did know that I was going to be done at that point. I was like, either I'm finishing at the Olympics or at the Olympic trials. It's one or the other. Yeah. Because I swam for three years post collegiately. So I swam at the University of Texas. And then the cycle finished where there was three more years until Olympic trials. So I was like, all right, fine. I'll go through one more round of this, but I'm not going on. Like, that's already pretty old. For yeah, because most people like get in by twenty or nineteen or something like that, right? For swimming, or is yeah. it, what's the average age? Uh, their first like a first you know Olympic. What? I wonder what like the average actually ends up being. But I would say like ideally, you're about twenty to nineteen to twenty one or so would be like the ideal time to go. Maybe nineteen's a hair young. Twenty to twenty two, let's call it. Yeah. For women, for men, it's a little bit later because uh, men grow. You guys grow really slow. <laughs> yeah. Oh really, right. Really slow. Yeah. It's yeah, weird. yeah. Right. Um, so for me, I was 25 at that point. I was old. Yeah. And if I had done another four, I'd be 29. And I was like, Oh, you gotta really, it has to really be a dream. 29's tough. Yeah. Yeah, Can you imagine? No. When we were talking about it off air, you know, I don't know if you noticed, but I was a college quarterback. uh, (laughs) I do it all the time. I I love this. 16 minutes. 16 minutes. I I waited a a long time. I had a bet. I had a bet like internally. I'm like, is it what the over under I had was 12. Until it comes up. I think because when you like, Go pro and you're making money. I'm assuming you had sponsorship money yeah. and you have felt a taste of what being it's an, like to be a business. Being an you adult? Know? Yeah. Well, that's what I mean. It's like your it was your job to swim. Right. Like it felt like a job for me, but I was, you know, wasn't getting paid. I went to a small college. Right. It wasn't like I had boosters giving me money under the table. And it felt unfinished. Mm-hmm. And it took forever to let that go. But for you to know like, okay, I'm fucking done. Yeah. Why did you know you were done? Well, I will say to your point, a lot of people, I, I was a little different than a lot of people. Like I definitely knew I wanted to move on. I have also like interests in other areas. Not that they don't, but like I was very much ready to go and pursue, you know, working in the business world potentially and doing whatever I'm doing on that side. Mm-hmm. And then I also knew I really loved comedy and I wanted to get more involved on that side. Uh, I knew it was going to take a little bit of time. And those are all things that are just, you cannot do that while you swim. No, there's no other. And you're also, like, you have, like, I had sponsorships and stuff like that, but these are swimming sponsorships. We're not talking, you know, something with Intuit or something like that. (laughs) You're you're, you're with a very niche swimwear brand that is designed for racing. So Mm -hmm. you're going to make some money, but it's not like, yeah, you're Life. not making a, you're not you're living make, high. You're making ends meet, you yeah. know? And it's one of those things where you could kind of get away. Like, I think I had one extra semester. Uh, so I took four and a half years to graduate because I did a, a business certificate thing. Whatever, it doesn't matter. But point being, I had a little bit of bonus time from then. And then two and a half years that I basically had to be, like, I was competing and trying to, you know, make qualify and make mm-hmm. enough money in the various avenues there were to support myself right. yeah. and fuck that it was a lot of, a lot of work <laughs> I during the uh, sponsorships did you have to do like any you ever do like a commercial or anything like that yeah I did one for Blue Diamond Almonds oh sick that's, that's cool. cool love the product uh-huh. love the product yep um, how'd, how'd it go um, uh, it was great. I Were you like I in sh- your I swim mean, gear? Did you have like the go- the glass? Did you like uh, pick them up and be like? You know what? I don't even think so. I think I just literally talked a little bit about the almonds and then. Just who I was. It's like, did you have the goggles? <laughs> <laughs> I the one thing he knows like, about swimming. Yeah, I feel like yeah, you he, just like push up out of the, out of the thing and like just grab some peanuts. You're, you're trying to you're trying to commercial. You should go work for Blue Diamond. This is way better than what they did. <laughs> so much fun. <laughs> no, yeah, that would have been a great call. That would have been perfect. No, that's not what they did. did did you know then when you were doing the like the little spot because there's a, there's two ways of looking at that right right and I had to face this with stand up recently where you're making ends meet off of 
the thing. Like, no, like a, such a small fraction of people get there. But did you know then, like, you really weren't truly in love with it because you were like, this kind of blows. To be fair, if I knew I could swim four more years at the same level, then maybe it would have been different. But I'm getting older. I was Historically, getting older, yeah, yeah. and I just it, knew, yeah. like, logically, like, there's no, I'm already having issues with my body. Like, Oh, what kind of stuff happens to you when you swim that much? Everyone's a little bit different. I actually had a very rare, I had a sports hernia. Oh, wow. Yeah, which is oh, wow. typically only men get those. So It's all that masculine energy you got. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty, pretty rare. <laughs> Women are the new men. <laughs> uh, we're coming for you. Don't you give your own. I'm going to get prostate cancer next. <laughs> Can't wait. <laughs> no, but I, I literally ripped a hole in the side of like right in my hip here. I did breaststroke, which is like the. Yeah. This one. I'd be swimming in your women <laughs> like the breaststroke. Yes, Sorry, exactly. go ahead. I had that to do that. Beautiful. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a notorious B.I.G. line, uh, Ed, in case you didn't know. How do you tear, like, so just from the motion and the frequency and constantly doing that, you tore. Yeah. Wow. Uh, I mean, it, it was overuse injury. I'm sure there was something that probably initially sparked it. It's really tough to tell because you still have a lot it? of different working out. So I had to go in and get a mesh put over it. Um, so oh, I had surgery right. and they put a very small yeah, little right. piece of plastic yep. over yep. it. And then there were a bunch of lawsuits, not the mesh I had, thank God. But you remember those where you're like the, oh my God, transvaginal mesh? Mine's <laughs> slightly different. But did you see those commercials? No. Oh my God, they were everywhere. They were the class action lawsuit and they were like, did you get a transvaginal mesh? <laughs> what is it? And where did they put it? Like, I mean, I know the vaginal, but like what? I, I think it's all like in the, because mine was here okay. and it depends on what your region ah. was. And the kind of mesh that they had done out the gate was transvaginal fucked mesh. up. It was bad transvaginal mesh. I love, mesh. I just did, so on that commercial. So the edges were all like wrinkly oh, or something. I love a good class action oh, lawsuit. A, do you do uh, them? I love them. Oh, I would love. Sign up. Oh, you yeah, get yeah. like random Checks. It's oh, so yeah. fun. Did you get the Facebook one? I no, I think I did. Did you? It was really small though. One of them I got hundred bucks. bucks. Oh, you got hundred bucks. It was a Verizon settlement. I think. I yes, one of my friends that. got the Verizon one, and then I signed up for. I need one. the money yeah, too. Sometimes I sign up and I don't get anything. Yeah, it's if they yeah. lose. Yeah. Oh, is that what it is? So. How is yeah, that you fucking works? lost. You're the. Oh, I thought it was like one guy that signed up and didn't win any money. Facebook fucking won that one. Yeah. I I what I was saying about stand up is like when you. You know, I was going through some things and I was going, all right, I'm making money. And it, if you had told me 10 years ago that you'd be making this much money doing stand up, I would thought, oh, that's pretty cool. And you're like, it's not that great, though. And then you have to like fall in love. I had to fall in love with it again and understand yeah. like, oh, I didn't get into this for X, Y and Z. I really got into it for these these things so it, it's a being being in love with the process is so cliche but is like unbelievably important and i think it's in everything though oh, yeah to be fair to be good at something especially right yeah yeah you have you're going to hate it for a while at certain points yeah. my parents had this i actually just talked about this my parents had this process or this like philosophy let's call it where growing up i was always in charge of my swimming so they were like we're not forcing you to swim. You can quit whenever you want. However, it has to be at the end of the season. We're not going to let you quit right in the middle of like Christmas training is a very smart, famously difficult period because yeah, of course you fucking hate it then. Yeah. Right. You right. of course <clears throat> are like, that's smart. Hate when kids would be out, like my buddies would be out doing cool shit and I yeah. had to go to practice. I remember totally. cause I, oh. I, I grew up playing ice hockey and I started like when I was like six and uh, I remember a kid quit in the middle of the season and we were like, uh, teach quit like and one of the coaches went yeah he wants to watch cartoons on Saturday <laughs> like just just the shit talking I mean, but, that would but also true. I mean Quitting he was 100% right yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 and it's one thing like if you truly if it's not serving you move the fuck on yeah like it's mm -hmm. totally fine but like you need to make sure that you've gone through all the cycles of like championship like I've gone through the hard part I've yeah. gone through the wins like I know what I'm quitting versus like, it's hard because yeah. you know, whatever you're going to do, if you want to be good at it, it's going to be hard. Yeah. You know? So how is swimming like, um, how much of a team sport is it? Is it pretty, it's pretty team sport? Like, yeah. Yeah. Surprisingly, actually, I think your training group is like extremely important and will really impact what kind of experience you have because you want to have like, you know, positive people who are around like pushing you and like making uh -huh. you be better every day in practice. Now, ironically, it is an individual sport in the sense right. of sometimes those teammates are your biggest competitors yeah. and stuff like that. Oh, so yeah. that, that can be weird, but I think uh -huh. like broadly people do a good job of like 
staying kind and you know we have relays we don't really give a fuck um, <laughs> oh, relays. I like the relays. Are, are relays, are relays like fun. the lowest uh, yeah. no, no, watched no. kind of thing? They're, no, they're great. They're, I mean, people love them and stuff like that. But and the individuals really for, are for the U.S. That's awesome. But it's not like, uh, yeah, you're going after your individual races, yeah. and then you qualify to be on a relay, and you can get medals and stuff like that. And like, it's also it's an honor to be a part of a relay, but you're not like. You know, revolving it's, it's your life the cherry around. It's like the cherry on the Sunday. It's like, it's like the will. doubles of tennis compared sure. to like, yeah, like sports. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. <laughs> what did you, uh, what's one of the jobs you had after swimming? I do sales, baby. It's Ooh. a really good, uh, if you you're look an athlete, like you could do some sales. I sell the, sh- I'll sell the shit out of something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'll I sell do- the most garbage shit. <laughs> Whatever you want. You want it? No, I don't know. <laughs> I've been, um, I was lucky I was able to get into cybersecurity. So, oh, uh, yeah. Oh. Mm-hmm. So you're you're selling cybersecurity to companies. Yeah, so like software, so it's software yeah. sales. So oh wow, yeah. So not like use cars like me. You uh, get to go I mean, in I, it or like newspaper you subscriptions <laughs> like me. Cybersecurity. We've yeah. had a lot of dirtbag jobs. <laughs> <laughs> cybersecurity sales. I get some professional. Oh, you probably wear a nice dress suit. Oh, you didn't work for the Bucks County Courier Times. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't work in a place attached to a deja vu's. Oh, I don't know about you, Laura. I've lived a uh, life. No, I'm fighting people who are probably working from there. Though. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> seriously, right? Yeah. Totally. When you uh. Is that all you've, like, as far as jobs have gone, you pretty much stayed in that field? Uh, yeah. So yeah. I graduated, I, I got out, and then I've been working in it since I started. That's you know? wild. That's cool. That's what, like, Different a good... Different companies and stuff, though, to be fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah but, but it's the in same... The, in the industry. So let me ask you this. Do, are you... How knowledgeable are you of that, like, tech? Do you, do you know? Do you, I, I assume you've probably learned about it. Yeah, but like yeah, Going yeah, yeah. into it, were you like computer savvy or anything like that? I, like, just, I mean, I was a computer savvy in that I was a millennial. Like, so I knew how just to kind of normal use, levels. Yeah, yeah but yeah, for, yeah. for people older than that, we're like, whoa. Yeah, yeah right, right, right. Oh, Control, alt, delete. Holy shit. What? <laughs> she restarted the shit out of She's that. She's a witch. <laughs> She's Excel? She could ex- she could, she is excelling. <laughs> I was, um, so I knew about that kind of stuff and I knew the basics of, um, you know, it's not that difficult at the end of the day. Like the so very it's not core. like code. You don't need to know any no, code. No, I don't. I'm like not that. on the product side. I'm yeah, again, yeah. I'm just taking it to like what the right. value prop is. Yeah, yeah, she yeah. lets like the fucking nerds figure that out, Ed, yeah. all right? She goes in there and sells How the product. dare you look me in the eyes? <laughs> <laughs> she lets the peons like you figure out the <laughs> ones you, and twos. Are you twos. a coder? What do you do? No, <laughs> no, 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 you're no, really no, a coder. No, coder. Yeah, no, I... I you did, actually you are know, a smart guy, though. You're I'm a smart guy. engineer the, that failed. I failed out of engineering. Yeah, like I studied like math and science and stuff like that. But I'm I was like a drug addict for most. of I was That's like a great that job. was yeah. I was really good at that. I'm not even <laughs> really rocks. that good actually. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually very bad at it. The. Uh, no, no, no. I'm a video editor. That's my day oh, job. Oh, nice. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. so that's very tech forward. Not really. Like, I don't know code See, here's the or thing is you like say that. that, but at the same time, like, I've been trying to edit videos. It's, it's, it's the hard hardest fuck. fucking thing ever. Jesus. Oh, so uh, hard. yeah. I mean, it's mostly organization. Yeah, like, how to organize your... Uh, yeah. I know yeah. how to... Okay. He doesn't consider that tech, though. Yeah, that's sort of that brain. So, power. no, I, I know what you mean. I think people always kind of consider it like, do you have a screen up like in the movies where it's just numbers and letters jumbled and you're like, <laughs> Like doing yeah. sort of Are the, you iRobot well, or yeah. Mr. Robot? Well, yeah. When it comes to like cybersecurity, like I'm like, do you know like like how to change like your ISP protocols and stuff like that? Like when you go into the web, like to me, that is the most confusing stuff in the world. Yeah. Like, like a VPN, VPN, all that. I know shit. how I, I know how a lot of that stuff like works and like ties together on a higher level. You yeah, know what I mean? Okay. And like what products do what within it. I'm not a practitioner, so the actual nuts and bolts of running it, you know, right, I'd probably right. be like, I don't fucking know. So you but go in and I, pitch, though, right? To a company, you go in and pitch the product? Yes, exactly. Do you put it up? Like, so this is all of your guys' bank account in this room. With, oh, my God. Boop, I just so- stole your fucking money. <laughs> this is why you need my product. I'm Josh Ricardo. <laughs> Here's my card. If you want your money back, just give me a call. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to hire you. That's what I'm do. You have contracts. <laughs> contracts have all been emailed to you. <laughs> Wow, it's weird. It looks like you docu signed already, or was it me? Or I'm your account. Maybe you do need a Cardo cybersecurity. <laughs> it's a van out front too. Just with so like my a- counterpart, Laura. Laura, go ahead, walk them through the broad strokes. I'll be in the break room. You know, Ma- McAfee used to do that. They would have their cyber like um, saving van or something, and they would drive it around. It did fucking nothing, but it looked cool. Yeah, that's what I mean. It probably it looked cool. Made its money back in marketing oh, alone. Exactly. Yeah. People were like, you need to have a van show up. <laughs> when you have an incident it's yeah. really important so for a van so it's commission funny. too yeah. right 
Yeah. They have plus salary? See, yeah. that's the sales job. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Because those are big sales too, right? Yeah. Like, it depends on the organization. Oh, yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Because I'm an office guy, so I work for big corporations and that cyber shit's no joke. They no, it's spend not. a lot I mean, of dough on that. I mean, the you have to remember, on the flip side, the people who are working as attackers, like that's an industry. Like in Russia, oh, that's yes. like, I think that's like their number two industry. Oh in Russia, yeah, which hacking. Is, they right? have offices. Like oh, it's yeah. a, it's like they have <laughs> they get, like their own Apple campus. Literally, <laughs> literally, literally so this cool. is a real ass job. It's to go and just fuck with us. <laughs> the Nigerian people have the same thing. Like the <laughs> quick princes, yeah. throw the Nigerian <laughs> prince <laughs> office. <laughs> Oh, one really God, nice God. office. They're all princes. They're all wearing the They're wearing hats. The, you must wear the hat if you work here. <laughs> it's actually a castle. They all work from one castle. Do we know that we're virtual? Doesn't matter. You wear... Uh, you wear your whole thing. They like it. They can sense it. That's so fucking great. Yeah, that's great. Number two industry. Did you yeah, know that? I, I, I don't... Fact check me. I'm, actually, you know what? Don't fact check Go Let's for believe it. it. I'm Go going with it. it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Fact check One here. of my favorite things is spreading misinformation. Yeah, it's it's just a hobby of mine. It's the best. <laughs> it used to I be did a, that, I did that earlier today. I, I, what was great. I saying? I just said, oh, I was like, oh, the AT&T outage. You know, yes. this yesterday. Probably a hack. Probably a hack. Yeah. Well, and then yeah, yeah. as I was I like going it. to Sell bed, product. <laughs> I saw on um, Puberty. That, you know, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that, uh, that a weird meteor. name, by the way. Puberty. Yeah, I know. The Just weirdest. make it puberty. But yeah. a, uh, Maybe puberty. A, a meteor went by the earth last night. A I, meteor? A Sorry, me guys. Uh, Sopranos me call back. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> no, a meteor went by. And in my head, I went, ah, that was what the at t thing was about. And then I just did not read yeah. it all. And I must have told four different people that. That's a working. <laughs> there is nothing more working class hole go, oh, yeah, that AT than confidently thing? saying the <laughs> wrong thing. <laughs> Every, every tower got hit by a small meteor. <laughs> you read about that? <laughs> Some puberty. Bouncing around like Pong. We're going to one to another yeah. satellite. It was insane. Pretty yeah, wild. it's all the uh, EMF. Yeah, it's uh, electromagnetic fields. <laughs> there was a theory that it was a solar flare. Oh, yeah. Yeah, which is like the sun. That would make more sense, yeah, honestly. I than, don't think that's what meteor. fucking happened. I think that that's bullshit you think it was a hack it was a hack job. i think it was probably a hack nice. i have no basis for saying this i have to make sure not to spread misinformation on this one because i do work <laughs> in this work? industry <laughs> <laughs> i literally work in the industry this is, is the clip that is, goes out well your comedy went too far all right <laughs> I, we got people I, calling now everyone's like she said uh, i have no basis for saying that it, you know what let's go with solar flare it was the solar flare <laughs> i'm back on meteor actually <laughs> yeah, <laughs> tiniest meteor just jumping around does being of such a meticulous like athlete serve you for stand-up as well I would assume I in think a way so. I think like so. the it's, discipline part must translate it is um, you know what's great about almost every other job is you're never in physical pain which is like really cool you depression know? It's, but not physical besides pain besides depression <laughs> yes exactly um, so I remember like going to open mics and stuff like that I was like honestly I'm having kind of a good time and like, why did the, you pick stand up like what made you like I, why do you love it and why? when did you start after getting out of swimming yeah I loved stand up growing up I was like obsessed with stand up I used to download all the Comedy Central half hours yeah. like anyone who had a half hour I was lime wiring that shit yeah. I was downloading viruses probably at the same time there you <laughs> nice. go so it was all of my interests Two merged careers. Yeah, merged together online. fucked up my parents computer um, <laughs> so watching like that fan <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, that's so funny <laughs> I know he had a half hour. I know that guy. <laughs> I watched that whole transition. <laughs> I got a story off here. I can't tell. It's like so fucking good. Keep going. Was, I'm sorry. It, but what was hilarious, it was like the most random group of people would have these half hours. And I'm 12, just like, ha, 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 like mowing the lawn or some bullshit, putting on my MP3 player. Oh, fancy. So I, I really, I know. I'm old, though. I'm 43. Like songs. You know? <laughs> yeah, that big, know. with the screen on it, with the TV, yeah. I thought oh, it was like the G. If you were lucky. Yeah. Or it had just where you to kind of guess. Oh yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. The oh, shuffle, the big Pussy like, cat iPod, dolls, dat fan. I had, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Lime, oh, LimeWire. Yeah. Oh yeah, my god. They would name it to try to dodge people taking oh. it down. They would name it insane the shit, craziest stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, I loved stand up from, from when I was really, really young, and I never really put together that those were real human beings that like, you know, were doing it. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. know. Take. I don't know about you guys, but like, it wasn't until I met somebody that was doing an open mic that I was like, oh, you could just. 
connects the dots. So oh, you could just, like, I, I've always wanted to do that. And I, I didn't think know it was something you could do. With podcasts and stuff like that, I think stand up has just gotten a bit more accessible nowadays mm-hmm. to people. Yeah, like, the shine's kind of been worn off because people yeah, get so it. many stand ups in their feed all day. Yeah. Uh, I remember the, the reason why the shine wore off for me is when I started working in the comedy store, there was a guy that I really loved uh, and I <laughs> went up to LA to do a spot. And it, this is before the comedy store had its resurgence. He was like living in the main room, green room. Oh no! <laughs> like, I was like, oh, no. maybe this isn't a great. But it's so funny. I saw that and I was like, "Fuck yeah!" Like, yeah. That's why I yeah. got into stand up yeah, 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 to live in the comedy yeah. store. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Young that men are inspired. Like, I live in the belly room, green room, like, <laughs> like place to sleep. The Bukowski element of the whole thing. Yeah, that's right. kind of why stand up to me because I've been doing it for so long. That air is so weird now for me. Is because. I'm meeting less and less disturbed people yeah. and I really gravitated towards the that aspect of it yeah. where you were brilliant for 20 minutes a night and then your whole day was just how do I stay alive yeah. like, and it created this chaos and like you said you didn't have access to these dudes you just heard the stories you know like I've yeah. known about Joey Coco Diaz since the beginning of time i known that dude and about that dude because the stories and now he's famous for the stories but bef- that was every dude in the circle mm-hmm. and I really loved that I thought that was like such a it, dangerous thing you know it That's did cool. have like a romantic rock star kind of element without like the money that rock the money stars the but women a, a, the yeah, looks just the kind of like being a bit of a degenerate which especially for you know as but a you woman, could do something I, no one could do that yeah. with no you were jump you were basically the equivalent we are the equivalent of those people that jump off a cliff with the bat suit and oh, fly yeah. in between we don't that's what we do people are scared shitless of what yeah. we do right. so there's a badassery to it right. that used to be so great but yeah. now that everyone is posting their clips and everyone's like it like you said, it's made it more accessible. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's so much but more I will say it has also brought a lot of people into it that probably wouldn't have gone. Like, I really loved it. And so I started doing improv and then I eventually started dating Matthew and then we moved to New York and I was like, I'm definitely going to do this. But like a lot of people like, other, I mean, frankly, for women, especially at, mm-hmm. at that point, like it wasn't a friendly place. No, you no, know, the women and I there's knew. A lot very funny people yeah. who wouldn't have and been able to get into it otherwise. Yeah, yeah, Those true. women were so tough. Like every, yeah, I, can't even I mean, the women that I met starting out from the comedy store, like that were there for like 20 years already, they're probably one of the tough, the toughest people I've ever met. I like mean, fucking can throw hands in a bar with you. Like they, cause people, they got, they got fucking harassed, dude. I'm sure oh, they did. In an insane sure. way. And they, yeah. it was, yeah. Definitely, you're right. So it's definitely like a net positive, but I do agree with you that there's a certain amount of just being like, huh, no, we don't have an edge anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're mm-hmm. just really, you could you could email me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there's like 50 ways to contact me. I, <laughs> God, these guys didn't have a phone in 2002. You know, you can send me a DM. I'll probably reply. <laughs> was it easier or harder having someone that was already doing stand up as your partner and you getting into it? It's a really interesting situation. Um, I actually do a podcast with May Planner, who yep. is Mark Norman's wife. Um, Mark is obviously like you know his career's really taken off. <laughs> yeah, but um, pretty, when we first well started, known. yes, but but needless to say, we were both like kind of started doing comedy as like our partners were quite established. Though I will say, when I first started dating Matthew, he had nothing online, so. I'm good. So you didn't know. Agent. <laughs> yeah. I'm a very good pick talent. Um, and he was very handsome. Um, <laughs> most importantly. Um, it was very intimidating because I knew for a couple of different reasons. First of all, I knew that I was going to get judged more harshly, which yeah. I, I definitely was, you know, and people don't like when significant others start doing something. And I was like, uh, Hey, right. I, I already but love stand up. That like, happens go in a lot of jobs yourself. though too. Yeah, yeah like yeah. the for boss's sure. wife start, shows up and starts telling me what to do at a restaurant. I'm like, dude, I gotta listen to you now too. Can you imagine being one of their <laughs> openers though? Like, fuck, now this guy's wife's doing comedy. <laughs> fuck, another road gig. <laughs> Another one. <laughs> That's true. That is true. Cancel the Wi-Fi. <laughs> <laughs> He's been touring with Matthew for now, like two years. All of a sudden, Laura's, I, was, Laura's I just lost my choo choo September. <laughs> what am I gonna say? You should fuck him. <laughs> you should be 5'11 and hot, bro. I, don't know I recommend 
like sleeping with him. It actually works pretty well. Um, but no, but seriously, that is, and, and Matt and Mark like never lets me open for him. Matt lets me open on occasion, um, but mostly like both of them have really encouraged us to like do our own, like I'll speak for myself, have encouraged me to do my own thing. And I very much have done so. Like I ran a bunch of shows, did all the mics, obviously wrote my own shit, bombed my fucking ass off. Yep. Like, mm-hmm. you're, like, And I think after a while, people do start to notice and be like, okay, do I know more people because of him and the networking element? Yeah, for sure. sure. So yeah, that's, that's a, a huge hand up. It is a huge hand up. But then on the flip side, I also think that anything I do achieve is looked at a little bit like, mm, right. you know, yeah. so you which do, is sucks. Yeah, it's yeah. a chip on your which shoulder. It pushes your bar higher. Like you have yeah. to be, you can't get away with like B material or whatever. You yeah. know what I mean? Like you have to kill. If you kill. do poor, it right. looks, it's really embarrassing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But so the, I don't know. It's it's really weird. I've really wondered about the whole thing. Um, on the flip side, I've seen a lot of girls in stand up who you know just kind of are able to sleep their way to the top. And I'm like, yeah. I chose one fucking asshole. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that is not a strategy I get to utilize. Sometimes, yeah. if that was a thing for guys, I would just tell my wife Lauren, like, dude, I'm just gonna fuck about thirty bookers. Yeah, it's gonna happen. And we're gonna have a mansion, mm-hmm. and it's all gonna be fine. Mm-hmm. I'll get the STI check. It'll be fine. Yeah. We it's can a strategy. Do this. It's a winning strategy. <laughs> the effort I would put in, Ed, for a win at Meanwhile, 43. If I reach out to a guy to like open for him or something, they'd be like, I'm not trying to get my ass kicked by Broussard. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right, right. Oh, really? Week. Well, I'm, I'm not like, but, but you know what but I mean. But they don't want to offend your husband. It'd be they, weird. Yeah, it's kind yeah, of yeah, a little yeah. weird. Yeah. So. I don't know. I uh, Yeah, I, I definitely it could be weird, but it's like one of those things where I'm always, uh, whenever like, you could get someone different in front of you that is not the same as you, but the right. same. Right. You know, I was like a an attractive woman who's also funny and is talking about separate things in me is right. such a compliment. Yeah. Why would I not want that up in front? Because you and I were sometimes a little too close. Like some of it's the stuff, hard yeah, sometimes. Yeah, I'm a you little know, you too need something close to compliment because I open for him all the time. Yeah. That, that's kind of our thing. And like there are things where it's like. Uh, you know, I have the drug stuff, which separates us. We're but, separate enough to where, here's well, how I look at it as an actor. Yeah. Like, uh, it was between me and Matthew for the Marvel's Mrs. Maisel role. Uh-huh. I got like four callbacks for that. And I look at it the same way, where it's like, you and I in, would never be up for the same role. No. So yeah. it doesn't matter to me if you're up in front. Because if you're not going to, like, if I'm not have to compete for you for a job, then we're going to be all right. Uh, but yeah, and we don't talk about similar things at all. Yeah, we don't. We just happen to be married. And yeah, happen yeah, to be yeah. addicts. I mean, that's and really like, it. Yeah, like the dirtbag element of it. Yeah, but that's, yeah, but that's, yeah. All, that's everywhere. <laughs> it's nice. It's Even Laura has a little dirtbag in her somewhere. It's, I mean, it's a throughput. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's a throughput. We got a nice throughput. <laughs> yeah, but it, it's it, it's definitely interesting. It's been a, a weird challenge, especially in New York, too. I think in New York, people care a lot more about like the purity of the art. You oh, know? yeah. Absolutely. So they need, they need to watch you suffer. Yeah, LA is oh, totally, hot. Totally, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and what? I've fucking suffered. I think yeah. COVID helped me for that because I produced a lot during COVID and stuff like that. So they'd see me like dragging like park benches around. And uh, no, I always oh, respect girl, people yeah, that yeah. like are sweating for the gig, sure, man. Yeah, That's, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yep. definitely. Let me ask you this. Are you still doing stingers in the morning? <laughs> yeah. You <laughs> still plunging? <laughs> <laughs> when was your last Imagine stinger? Imagine that's the one thing I keep that's going. That's you held on to? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, can't let it go. It's just so fun. <laughs> the Ramada needs me. <laughs> me and the little eight-year-old. Uh, every time you walk. Like, insist on being in the pool. Every road gig, you're like, you know what? Let's just look at a stinger. Just get just this get blood in moving. In there. Get in there. Yeah. Hey, do you ever get like a testosterone? Your own click in when you're like someone's pissing you off. You know, I wish I could fucking swim right over you right now because that's like your power, like your superpower. You never feel like that's your aggressive. I yeah. want. Let's do a swim off. Maybe not a swim off, but like you hit him with some. Yeah. You know, like your you just muscle memory. Generally want to kick the shit out of. Swim- <laughs> yeah, but I feel yeah, like, I have a like in a street. But like in a, <laughs> you have to have that right. As you, do, I, no, you do need to have. But like, in an aquatic like, manner. <laughs> hit him like with water. Yeah, but like a water, you're slashing him <laughs> like some kind of superhero, like a, like a Marvel. Fight. 
<laughs> just like <laughs> you just <laughs> splash him so hard in the face he drowns. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Where are you at, Laura? Please plug all your things. Um. Well, you can check out my podcast, Risque Business News. Um. I host it with May. I've mentioned her a couple times. It's fucking fun. We talk shit about random business scandals. Turns out that's very easy. There are a lot of those. They are Ooh. weekly. Kind of on brand for you too with Ooh. the security. I know. Right. right? We try to keep it in one thing and then you can also come see me live um i perform all over the city all over the country i'm doing random shit everywhere so oh, yeah. follow me at laura sogar on the platforms and uh yeah awesome. amazing uh at josh cardo josh com. ed uh at ed mcgowan comedy on instagram follow me on or uh, go to my website ed mcgowan.com see my uh, tour dates we have an email account email yes. us if you've ever been a swimmer email. If you know what a stinger is, if you want to... If you hold your breath for 15 <laughs> yeah. to 30 seconds, we'll take it. Send us an email. We'll read it on the uh, pod. Uh, it's workingclasscomedians at gmail.com. We will see you guys again next week. You can listen to us on all major podcast platforms every Wednesday. You can follow us on Instagram at Working Class Holds. Also, make sure you watch the full show on YouTube. All you got to do is type in Working Class Holds. And please don't forget to rate us five stars and tell a friend. Come on. 